Hey, hey, everybody, how you doing? Starting to smell good on the old cooking Oh, it set is. Because Mr. Johnson is doing onions. Onions and red peppers. You know, I used to tell you that was, that was a little trick that Tootsie taught me about cooking. Look at this. They've done something weird to my tie. <laughs> <laughs> Your, cell, your pie is shaped Work. like a Coca-Cola bottle. 20 minutes on this. I don't know what he's done. But anyway. Uh, but anyway. Let me pull back here and see if it'll lift up. <laughs> she, uh, she, she taught me very early on that you could sit and watch soap operas all afternoon and not do anything all day long, but approximately 20 minutes before her husband would come through the door, she always said, throw some onions on the stove so it'll smell <laughs> like something's cooking. And she got by with that for years. Uh -huh. she really I'm did. not surprised. Well, what are we doing? I today? don't know. Let's get the witch in here. Boing. Miss Witch has flown through. Has, and she, now she's leaving the belt. No, no she's, she's not. back oh, again. she got hung up on the <laughs> spoons again. <laughs> uh, you want to read it? Oh, sure. Yeah, dear guys, my husband keeps making jokes about my cooking. He refers to everything as mystery meat du jour. <laughs> Could you help me by giving us some real mystery meat recipes that might be a little unusual? I hope you can. Thanks, Betty Callender of Elks End, Nevada. No, I'm North the, Dakota. North Dakota. I can't <laughs> figure these things out. P.S. I know you two. Roadkill is not an option. <laughs> You're darn right. Well, it's. I, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm doing. This is the unusual meats show. Uh huh. Unusual meats. I'm doing something called ham tuckaways. <laughs> that sounds like, you know, one of those old southern gentlemen it's from Richmond that we know. Ham, ham tuckaway. He's <laughs> a good man. And I'm doing catfish fiesta. Oh, my heavens. And then the lovely Doris is coming in with uh, venison jerky. <laughs> yeah. We are all looking forward to that. <laughs> She oh, anyway. is the queen of mystery meat, as we all know. I have to take a, a baking dish here and, and just put a little of something in to keep it from getting all sticky, because what we're going to do is, is put all of this in there and, and bake it. Bless you. And uh, I'll be with you in a minute. Johnson, what are you doing? Well, uh, for my catfish fiesta, what I want you to do is chop up half a red pepper and half an onion and saute them until they're translucent in just a little bit of margarine or oil, which I am doing right here, and it's very lovely. And while that's going on, we're going to make the Fiesta Shake. Now, that's a seasoned mix, and these are the ingredients. Sounds like a dance. Yeah, so I'm going to give you the ingredients for my recipe right now. It'll be a little early, but that's all right. We're going to use two catfish fillets, a half a pepper, red pepper, half an onion, and the shake is made up of an eighth of a teaspoon each of the following spices, cayenne pepper, cumin, onion powder, garlic powder, oregano, and salt, and we're going to add a couple of tablespoons of white wine to it. This recipe is real easy to do, and so let me turn this down just a little bit. My vegetables are getting close to being to the right point. So, Larry, why don't you go ahead and... They're just perfect in every way. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, well, this has to be done in two parts. Part one is the tuck-away part. <laughs> so start out with just an egg, and what you need to do is to beat that egg up just a little bit. Beat it up. And we're going to put that in a bowl, and we're going to mix a whole bunch of other stuff in there. Also, including tomatoes, I'm using about a, a, half a, a, a half a can, one of those big cans of tomatoes. And that goes in there. Uh, you just have to use your, your head a little bit. Half a teaspoon of dry mustard goes in that. Half a teaspoon of dry mustard. Boom. And... A teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Put that in there. This is an interesting combination of stuff, and I haven't because I baked this in advance, but I'll tell you the truth, I didn't have a chance to taste it. So we'll just all have to go through the misery together. And then into this you also will put uh, chopped onion, which I'm going to chop right now, mix it up real good, and two cups of fine chopped ham, which I will also chop here in just a second. A lot of chopping going on. 
So let me work on the onion and we'll get back to Mr. Johnson. All right, now I've combined my spices and I doubled it uh, that so it was a cut. little easier to do and we're just gonna pinch on these spices on these fine catfish fillets. This knife is horrible. You know, one of the great things today, Larry, are these catfish fillets. Because I remember when Granddaddy would go fishing, he wouldn't bring a catfish home for anything because they were so hard to deal with, you know, a lot of bones and... Now you just go to the store and they have those wonderful fillets and you can throw them on the and grill. And they're delicious. Oh, they're wonderful. They're not bony. And, and you don't have to put up with that whisker, those whiskers, yes. looking at those whiskers. And they're farm raised so they don't taste like river bottom. I don't like anything that looks back with big whiskers on it. So I'm, I'm sprinkling my mix on here of all of these fine herbs and spices. I felt a little bit like the late, great Colonel Harlan when I was doing this, Harlan B. Sanders, with all his herbs and spices. But you just want to put the spices on, and that's all. Okay, and now the next thing we want to do is to put the vegetables on top of this and I'm about to do that. So without any further ado, we're just gonna sprinkle the sauteed vegetables on top of here. Well, it looks like about anybody could do that. Uh-huh, any fool could do this. This is a real easy recipe for you beginners. There's just nothing to it but a little bit of measuring with those spices in the beginning. All right, there we are with that. I'll turn the heat off. And uh, why don't you go ahead, because I have to get out the, the secret ingredient now. And <laughs> it, it'll <laughs> take a little while ingredient. to get into it. Okay, I've chopped up a small onion, very, very fine over here. And now I'm going to chop up some ham, about two cups worth of ham, and just sort of dice it up into small little dicey things. And that's what I'm doing right now. This has got to be the worst knife I have ever seen in the face of the world. It won't even cut, it won't even cut soft ham. I've never seen anything like it's just mangling everything, ladies and gentlemen. It's a mangling knife. And we're just going to cut those into little tiny, it says chopped. I guess that's chopped. I don't know. It's as close to chopped as you're going to get. Is that close enough to be chopped in your book? Miss mm -hmm. Doris, who knows all says sure oh thank you we have a standby knife has been brought in ladies and gentlemen oh that's much better much better yeah this is our stunt knife double has been brought in that looks like it may be just a little bit more than two cups i just sort of guesstimated after a while you get to be so good at this that you can just eyeball it and tell <laughs> that one snicker uh -uh. This group is getting old and jaded when well, you can say something like that and get by with it on the set of Cooking Cheap. So anyway, now, you also put that into the tomato mixture. All of that goes in there, and you slop it all around, mix it all up. It's a rather peculiar-looking sort of thing, but that's what it's supposed to be. So anyway, the onions go in there, and the ham chopped goes in there. Now, you'll mix that all up, and in a couple of minutes, I will do the batter portion of this thing and uh, show you how that works. Laban? Well, I'm trying to get into this bottle of vino. This is a Johannesburg Riesling wine. Oh, no. Oh, it's yes. one with a real cork in it, which always well, I brought my own causes problems on this program. Uh -huh. We've never owned a good, decent wine thing. <laughs> well, we very seldom ever used one with a cork but in it. But they have sealed this thing up. We've gone high tone on the program, ladies and gentlemen. We actually have wine that requires a cork. Well, you know, they just don't make that cheap stuff like they used to. All right, now here is our wine. And I've got, I like to use this kind of cork remover, which is these little blades that go down in here because it doesn't tear your cork all up. And it's just as easy to, to get out. Well, I hate to say it, but you know, I cannot get those things to work. What's the secret? You just well, go back and forth like that, down in and there. then how do you pull it out? Just pull. You twist gotta it. twist it as you're doing. Mm -hmm. hmm. There well, it is, that all in one well. piece. I'll that's have a, to admit that's that's a piece of plan. done real fine. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. now, be careful, two Mr. tablespoons Johnson. of wine. 
the one on each side go in here. And uh, <laughs> looks like we got a little left. <laughs> All right, now let me get out some, some wax paper or some, uh, full, uh, what is this stuff? Plastic wrap. Salt. And put over the top of this thing. And we're going to microwave it. Oh, no. Anything but that. We hardly ever use the microwave for actual cooking, but today we are. And uh, oh, I'm just out of breath. Let me get over here. And it goes for seven or eight minutes. There's the microwave cam. All right. <laughs> well, where you? Let me see here. Oh, for heaven's sake. Uh, cook time. <laughs> Seven o oh, o oh. start and start. There it goes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I gotta do. I have to do the 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 dough part of this. It's not a dough. It's a batter. Dough. And you start out with a cup of flour. Boom. There's a cup of flour. And the next thing we have to do then is we have to cut into it. Well, let's put the rest of the stuff in first. A little bit of salt. Half teaspoon salt. Just a bit goes in there. And a one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder. That is one and a half right there, ladies and gentlemen. And then into that, you need to cut some, uh, some uh, shortening, two tablespoons of shortening. I don't have a tablespoon. There you go. And we're going to cut that into that just a little bit. And as soon as we get it mixed just a little more, we'll get in there with our fingers and do some work. And you'll get it to the crumbly stage. And while I'm getting it to the crumbly stage, uh, why don't we have the Cook Sisters come in? Oh, they, they're here, aren't they? Yes, well, they let's are. Bring them on in here. I'm getting this to the crumbly stage. All right, stage. girls, come on. Get and those the cook sisters will come down in and the save hall. me <laughs> while I'm getting this to be crumbly. And here they come right now. I can hear them even as uh -huh. we speak. Yeah. Hey, hey, sister. Yeah. I don't know whether you've ever thought of this. I'm not even sure you ever think. But did you know that chicken or tuna salad may seem like a good, fat-free alternative? Mm -hmm. But yeah. don't forget that mayonnaise, you remember her, uh -huh. mayonnaise can be full of fat. Oh, no, you ruined it. Now I don't know what I'll have left to eat. I'm Sister Cook. It does go on, so oh. I'm Tootsie Cook, and, and we're, we're the, the Cook, Cook sisters. sisters. We have to have, oh, yeah, well, it's so nice to be back again. We were just having a little chat here on the set <laughs> of Cook and Cheap. Now, this is the crumbly stage. That's what I call it. You remember the crumbly stage. Yes, it used I to did. come through here yeah. once a day. Uh -huh. But anyway, you can see. From down you know, in Buckhannon. <laughs> The crumbly stage the runs around the crumbly family. The crumbly family. <laughs> they were real wonderful. They really were. So anyway, you just kind of take it and run it just a little bit through your face. See that? Now watch that in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there we go. That's that. Now, the next thing you do is you add milk. Excuse now me. That's all over me. Uh, it was all over you to begin with. Now you add milk to, to create a batter. And you just kind of have to, it doesn't tell you how much milk. So you just kind of have to play around with it a little bit. It's got to be a pourable batter, but it doesn't have to be, a, you know, real thick. And you work out some of those lumps. I don't think I'd get it much thinner than that. In fact, that may be just a, a tad bit thinner than I'd like to have it, but that's okay. You can always add just a little more, uh, what do they call it? Flour. Flour. Yes, uh, is what they call Which it. Which is made from grains of wheat that are squeezed between two hard rocks. And you may want to kind of work a little, a few of those lumps out, though it's not terribly important. It's going to bake, so it's going to be okay, but we'll do that. Uh, so anyway, that's where we are on that. Let's look at the uh, recipe until I get this all worked the way I want it, and then we'll go from there. I'll show you how you, well, for heaven's sake. Uh, 
the dust. It's the dust. The uh, ham tuckaways, uh, anywhere from a, a half a uh, cup to a cup of canned tomatoes, and you can sort of vary that a little bit depending on how large your container is. Uh, one egg beaten, a half teaspoon of dry mustard, teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, two, uh, two teaspoons of chopped onion, two cups of fine chopped ham. And then the batter uh, is made up of uh, a cup of flour, two tablespoons of shortening, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, half teaspoon of salt, and milk. So when you get finished with it, what you do is you make sure that you, uh, I sprayed a little ham on there so it won't stick. And first thing you do is you take half of it and put it down like so. There you go. And then you take your filling and put it across like so, and sort of spread it around. That's a mighty long microwave time. How long? Oh, you're actually cooking I'm them, aren't you? I'm actually cooking it. Well, I won't complain about that. It is chicken, you know. I don't want to... Chicken, it's oh, fish. fish, whatever it is. Fish. Catfish. <laughs> I would, oh, yeah, that's right. Catfish. Whiskers and all that good stuff. <laughs> Ladies and I gentlemen, sort of lost a track. mind is a terrible <laughs> thing to waste. <laughs> All right, and put the rest of that on there. Now what you do is you bake that at 400 degrees for 35 minutes. And it puffs up real nice and it gets real brown. And when it comes out of the oven, it looks like this. Isn't that pretty? Oh, does it have that little plastic wrap on it? Uh-huh, that plastic forms on top of it uh -huh. magically. It's, it's just amazing, it really is. Anyway, that's what it looks like when it's all said and done. So anyway. So that's a ham tuck away. Yes, it's true. Hmm. Well, let's bring those cook sisters yes. in. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> well, speaking of the cook sisters, here comes the oh, yes, that's evil right. niece. We do. I knew <laughs> that we had uh, Clarice Cook has come in here. What in the okay. world are those oh, things? Well, first I oh, want to get foreign effects so everybody can see my sweater. I have a lot of people ask me about my sweaters, and this is my Easter sweater with the bunny and the garden, and see, isn't it pretty, oh. isn't it cute? Just as cute Real as she cute. can be. Right. Throw her in a okay. basket. But I have, a lot of people say they look to see what kind of sweater I'm going to have on next, and I just wanted to show my sweater. Oh, okay. I haven't had a new one in about a year or two for the show. But, um, get that yeah, that's okay. I've it's made plastic. A mess. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Doris, okay. you were supposed to do venison jerky, and that looks like Toll House. That, that's venison, venison jerky. The dogs love it. <laughs> they tested it. That just but it, makes me feel so comfortable. <laughs> well, yeah, my dogs won't eat doggy stuff. Uh -huh. I have to go out and buy them people, st people, people jerky. He, they won't eat anything that they make for dogs. But anyway, this is venison jerky, and. <laughs> <laughs> Jim wants to try one. <laughs> and it takes one pound of venison cut in bite-sized pieces, and they were three times the size. And I had, I had a whole cookie sheet full, and they just shrink right up. And then two tablespoons of that Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of liquid smoke, one teaspoon salt, a fourth a teaspoon black pepper, and one teaspoon of garlic. Now you mix this all together and you marinate this for oh, a day or two, stirring it frequently, or you know, every now and again. For then, a day or two? Yep, to get, make sure the flavor gets into it. And then you put on a cookie sheet covered with foil and bake it at 175 to 200 degrees. Um, Stirring occasionally from four to five hours or until it gets nice and dry. Who sent this recipe? And this is sent in, um, it was from the Virginia Hunters for the Hungry. They sent us a, a cookbook and it has terrific recipes in it for well, no anyone that's interested in events. It takes two days to fix it. Uh -huh. Well, they, they've had a lot of other good ones that I've Not tried good too. Books. And it's from Susan Tennant, a forester from Prince Edward County, Virginia Department of Forestry. And you know, and for all those people that have complained mm -hmm. down through the years, and a lot of them have that we never do any wild recipes uh -huh. on the show. Okay, this there is, you go. But th this is good, because well, we, we... tell them what Hunters for the Hungry See, it's not really... Is. It's not totally dry. <laughs> the hung, this is when people go hunting and they don't want the venison. <laughs> they don't want the deer, or they've gotten more than they can handle. And they donate it to the hungry. And um, a lot of the recipes in the book come from the different areas or the food shelters that cook the venison right. up for the for the. Uh, and it really is pretty good. It is. Larry and I have doesn't taste anything like venison, does no. it? No, no. With uh, tastes like chicken. A couple of the shelters <laughs> here in this area, and they do. They 
They take mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. venison and grind it up and make hamburgers and spaghetti sauce and all kinds of stuff out of it. So uh, it's a good, good project. Well, it's real pretty. Now, how do you do? You just like set it out and hope people know what it is, or what do you? How do you? <laughs> well, I've never out? served it before, other than for us to eat it. <laughs> I guess you would have to put a sign on it because it looks like party food for some kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, <laughs> of course, it's wonderful having you here. <laughs> so if you want to know how to make your own beef jerky or venison, beef jerky. <laughs> something that people are always asking us to do oh. all the time. <laughs> anyway. Well, I've got to get my dish now out. Now, your yeah. stuff has, has uh, come out, right? Yes. No, uh, it hadn't come out. It's about to. Aha. Uh -huh. If we can find. And there oh, it is. Doris. <laughs> oh, the look. The, <laughs> The front of the drawer fell off. Oh. <laughs> How terrible. Uh, well, it's a cheap kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, but look, it's still, if you get out from the front of it. Oh, and there are the potholders way up in the back. <laughs> no, what is that? That's some tissue paper. <laughs> Somebody was. <laughs> Gee, it was a, a good uh, countertop. Uh, well, look, you just ripped it right out by its roots. <laughs> Well, and where is, where is Norm when we need him? <laughs> or those furniture to go guys. That's it. Get them down here. Get those furniture to go guys. Down They'll here. know how to put it back together. Oh, me. Uh, is it done? Well, it seems like well, the plastic like part is. Well, it chicken to me. <laughs> oh, it, it looks real interesting. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Uh, well, well, how many minutes did it have to go? No, it's gone. It's the right number of minutes. Uh, you're sure of that? Well, uh, it's it, gone. It, it right. looks real pretty. Well, I'm going to take gonna, it over to the table. I'm going to take my tuckaways and tuck them away here. I don't even have any idea how you. I guess you just got to get a spatula or something and get it out. I'm not sure. But anyway, there it is. It's real pretty. It's just lovely as can be, ladies and gentlemen. And, and uh, excuse do me. Do we have so Oh, yeah, we do have something we can serve it with. Uh huh. Oh. oh, man. You know, I hit him on the wallet, and he didn't even feel it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Now he has the destroyed the entire set. Well, I want you to look <laughs> at <laughs> Let me test this chair real quick. <laughs> Sit down. I'm afraid I want you to look at this. This is perfect in every way. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. So you got your ham tucked away inside there. Mm -hmm. It's like it's supposed to be. And it's, look at that, it's a little prefabricated thing. Just lovely, that's oh. what it is. Here, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> well, now what are you doing? <laughs> the catfish turned upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, hand would you like one of hand these? Your plate. All righty, okay. Oh. Uh, well, here, Johnson, have one. I want to. I want to see what you think of no this. No thanks. What do you mean, no I thanks? I don't care for any. <laughs> I don't believe when did we get to doing that on this show? Because when I was a child, the first book that I read that I loved was Bambi. Oh, let's not get into that. I don't want to hear it. Let me try the fish. <laughs> it does look done. That sure is a pretty cake. Hmm. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Well, the ham tuckaways are all right. Are they? They're falling apart, though. What do you mean they're falling apart? Well, the bread. The bread part is right tender. Hmm. Well, I think it's supposed to be tender. Mm-hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I think it tastes pretty good. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have this beautiful cake. The heck with the rest of this one. Let's eat the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like these ham tuckaways. Mm-hmm. And this catfish is, is pretty good. It's real tender, isn't it? It really is. It really is. It has a nice flavor to it. I think I like a little salt and pepper. <laughs> Over there. But anyway, that's real good. Well, that, I think we've got a pretty nice little meal here. We do. Are you sure you don't want them? Um... I, I'm real sure. They're real pretty, but... Uh, if they're good enough for Doris's dog, <laughs> well, they are. You gotta, I mean, you gotta like these sort of things, you know. The mm. type of person eats this, the type of person that buys that beef jerky well, and those things in the store. And you know what? It's good for punters to throw in their pocket. 
So yeah. when they're, when they're, so they have a when they're snack. out hunting, they have something to eat, and mm -hmm. they don't have to worry so about it. Have a little and snack. when they fall out of their tree stands, <laughs> uh, stands and break their hip, the dogs will know where to find. <laughs> <laughs> Fred didn't come back last night. We better send the dogs out after. The cake's real good, too. Uh -huh. <laughs>